What is good? We're back. We got a full tripod, as you can see. Uh, today, we're going to get into a little uh, rookie super flex mock, tight end premium. It's a heavily kind of faded rookie class that's been a little devalued, but it seems like there's seeming to be an awful lot of good prospects throughout, you know, a pretty long span of a draft here. Uh, however, there isn't really a strong co uh, consensus of any sort of outside of kind of Brees Hall being that 1-1. One, one. So we're going to do our first rookie super flex mocks here, start to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. And we have our guy, John Bauer, uh, joining us for that uh, pleasure. So what's yeah, up, dude? How's it going? Man, your, your voice got so deep in it i rather sexy i'm gonna be honest here no i I'm, I'm good guys yeah it's heating up here uh you know you guys were dming me asking me oh, like do you want to talk about this do you want to i'm like i'm gonna ready to rock and roll whatever you guys want to talk about but like you said this class it part of it is it's because of what is on the horizon in that 23 class. Mm -hmm. If the 2023 class did not look the way it does today, if it wasn't as talked about for multiple years now, I think 2022 people would be a little bit more uh, positive about it. Yeah. But there's some skepticism because, like you said, there's Brees Hall, there's Malik Willis, who you know we're going to get to talk about here very quickly, but then there's like that big tier of players that nobody has really emerged up to this right. point. But you talk about pieces of the puzzle, the big one coming up here in what, five weeks with the NFL draft, it's going to be critical for a lot of these players. So I'm looking at the way my mock draft fell with you guys, and I'm already looking at some of these picks. I'm like, crap, like that's, <laughs> oh, I, I don't, can I get a redo there? Yeah, right. yeah. But, but it's going to it's gonna be fun to talk about. And luckily, it was only a mock. Yeah, but that's why we do these, so we don't fuck it up. We mock it up. Yep. And uh, and this, let's, you didn't, I don't know if you said it, but this this is the way too early super flex rookie <laughs> mock. because you, It's you know, perfect timing, actually. Perfect timing, actually. Don't do your rookie draft before the draft, and then if you could, as long as you can hold out after the real draft to do your rookie draft, that's my personal opinion but yeah I, we kind of have it all the ways ffpc and some leagues that we share together they do it right after the draft and then i also have some for the home leagues that are end of summer drafts which i i do enjoy that a little bit more but it does kind of pay off to be up on the rookies and then do that early draft you can definitely catch an edge there uh kind of as well but we're going to try to put together a piece of the puzzle and i think Part of the reason why maybe there is some devalu devaluization of this class, if that is a word, is because there isn't any, you know, really too many consensus quarterbacks. Even with Malik Willis kind of in the fantasy community, I, I guess the regular NFL community is kind of in, in the same because of the intangibles of what he has. But if you're at the top of the draft right now and you need a quarterback in the real NFL draft, like you're you're kind of, you know, a little bit like eh, where it's been so robust over the last couple of years that I think that's also part of the equation why maybe it's not viewed quite as strong and and we're about to and jump people, into that people just want to hate man people just been <laughs> hating for so long and then the players did well at the combine and people are like oh man guess i yeah. can't hate anymore i don't know so don't let's, know. let's 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 get I going i don't know about you go ahead really quick i don't know about you guys but in in a lot of the leagues i'm in you know people sit there and, and bash these picks bash the prospects but i'm still seeing some 2022 picks even if it's not 101 or 102 they're they're trading at a pretty decent market value. Fetch some so value. you're still yeah. gonna, you're still going to have those managers that come in and they're like, okay, I got to blow it up, or if an orphan gets taken over, I got to revamp this team immediately because you know at dynasties it's long term, but God forbid anybody take a little bit of time, right. you, you got to do it right away. And I'm guilty of that myself at times. Sure, but there's still there is a market, and I think finding those market inefficiencies is something we talk about on dynasty theory constantly it's what helps give you an edge yeah now when you're in a league with like you gentlemen and several other podcast folks there's a little edge to be had so i'm like <laughs> right. it's, i'm like all right let's let, let's get a little lucky here for jb but uh yeah let, let's start talking about this guys yeah yeah it. that's again that's a part of the puzzle is finding out where you like these guys and like you said the nfl draft will, will then reorder shuffle this order a little bit uh but you start putting this piece of puzzle together to see where your values fall and then where kind of the consensus value falls and then that where where those lines are that's where the value is going to be for you to try to make moves in said draft to try to gain an edge uh so 
a hundred percent. So without let's, let's get a little plug for you. Where, where can we find you and, and all that kind of stuff before we get rolling here? Yeah. Host of dynasty theory live every Tuesday night. Um, we have the dynasty theory, Patreon, we have the discord and you know, the, the main goal of our discord and the Patreon, it is to discuss fantasy football, of course, but we love the aspect of building a community. Mm-hmm. And before the show, you guys were saying you don't do much Twittering. I was on Twitter like 24 seven, but as time has progressed, I've kind of gravitated away from that and spending time with and, and focusing on, you know, people that really want to dig in, like I said, in the dynasty theory discord. So that's where I am most of the day. Don't tell my employer. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. So go check that out. Uh, Patreon's a, a great way to, to support your favorite guys. And you guys sound like you have a nice little community brewing over there. So go sh- check out the dynasty game theory and Is follow that- him at the Bauer club on Twitter for your dynasty fantasy. theory. Sorry. No game. Yeah. Just no. dynasty theory, just dynasty theory. So go ahead and, and check that out. So, well, maybe after this mock, maybe you don't want to check it out, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but we appreciate you joining us and, and appreciate you going through this exercise with us. So without further uh, jibber jabber, let's get rolling here. So I had the one, one, Pretty easy. It's pretty much the only consensus, I think, rolling right now for the most part. It's Brees Hall. Probably not a whole lot to say right there. So if anybody has any, you know, anything to, Brees to add, go ahead and throw it in there. Um, call me the Brees, whatever you want to do. Uh, just one quick con. People want to say, you know, there are no elite prospects in this class. College production. He checks a lot of the boxes at a mm-hmm. high level. Look at what he did at the combine just to elevate his stock. He's I'm not saying he's an elite prospect, but he's a, he's a top tier prospect. He's pretty damn and, close. He's, and you're looking at the running back landscape as a whole. You know, age is a concern. Injury is a concern for a lot of guys off the field stuff for yeah. a lot of these guys. Mm-hmm. Brees Hall instantly slots in as a top eight dynasty running back before he touches the field. Yeah. So, again, he's not that Saquon Barkley type player. He's not that Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor type. But he's going to get that probably early second round draft capital. And that's the sweet spot. That's yeah. all we need. We Oh, well, there's no first round. We don't need a first round right, running back right. in the NFL draft. Second round, he's going to be fantastic. And, and the NFL is kind of telling you that for the most part, they're not going to really draft too many players in the first round anyway. So it's, if you get a decent second round draft capital on those guys, even some third round to the right spot mm-hmm. is, is perfectly acceptable. And, and Brees is, like you said, he's got he checks a lot of the boxes for you. Um, and, and we, we've talked about it as well. Like we, by the end of summer, obviously there may be a little bit of a uh, landing spot there, but he's probably going to end up being, like you said, uh, end of the top of the second round to, uh, bottom of the first round in actual fantasy, uh, startup, startup drafts. And, and like perhaps he's, he's going to shoot up I that mean. high because the <laughs> positional scarcity. And we talk about it a lot. Like we haven't necessarily quite fully seen a changing of a guard at the running back position where some of those older guys, like we haven't quite gotten Cam Akers and Dobbins and, and, you know, we didn't get to see ET last year. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's, you know, multiple, some other guys in there who haven't quite switched over to, to kind of start reinvigorate that, that RB tree, if you will, to, to, you know, have enough players to kind of go around. So I think just that fact alone and and what he's shown is going to throw him up in that spot. How easily. gross would it be though if he went to Denver? <laughs> oh, like that would be like like one of the landing spots. You're like, okay, Melvin and Javante were able to do it last year, but ideally, that's not what we get. And you right. know, some one of these landing spots is going to muck up somebody's sure, uh, uh, you know, potential here in rookie drafts. It better not be Brees. I hope. I hope it's not. <laughs> we are we are sitting at the one one in a draft that we share together, um, and we've Super had some flex. we've had some offers, and it's like I'm just not. I don't think I'm coming off of it. I think I'm just going to mm-hmm. take it and take the money and 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 move on. Which we need a quarterback. We might should take Malik, but. I mean, if we could work out a deal where we made someone think we were taking Malik, although we've said all over all yeah. these shows exactly <laughs> what we want to do, but it's going to be hard. I mean, I am torn. Needing a quarterback, Malik. We don't Willis. really need a quarterback. I mean, we're fine. We, we have got two Kirk to start. and Lance. Yeah, we have two That's... to start. It'd be nice to grab the third. I would be nice to trade back, but I mean, I, I think I got. I'm rolling with Brees, and I'm not looking back. Brees will be tradable for a while. So if we really want to make that move, we certainly could. Fair. Um, so let's you have the, the two slots. So we're going to go every third pick. 
you know, everybody's kind of switching it up. So you, One, you got two, three. You got uh, JB. If you mind, if you don't mind me calling you JB, um, I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and uh, who'd you take with the one two? Now I, I got to pick my spot and I have a top tier and it's it's a tier of two. So I was like, okay, I don't want to take Brees at one. Let me take yeah. the second player in my top tier and that is Malik Willis. Offers the rushing upside. I know there's always that concern with the the caliber of competition we talked about with Trey Lance last year, of course. Um, but then the way he's grown throughout these last few months at the senior bowl, the, the way he's interviewed with these teams, the, what we've seen, you know, even today at the pro day teams just seem to be blown away by the, his character, which is just as important for these high end prospects oh, 100%. Think, as on the field. So not only is he checking a lot of the boxes from a production and an analytic standpoint, out of the quarterbacks in this class, I do think he is the safest just because he presents that floor with the rushing upside. And there's other mobile quarterbacks, but I don't want to see any of these quarterbacks slip into the second round. And I know right. you could say, okay, well, JB, what if, uh, you know, uh, Matt Corral goes in the second to Atlanta? You know, whatever, just throwing things out there. Yeah, it, it, he could get the chance to start rather quickly with Mariota there, but. I, I won a quarterback in the first round because history tells us that once you get out of that first round, really out of the top, what, 12, 13, the hit rate really starts to decline. So Malik Willis, it sounds like he's locked and loaded top 10. Hopefully nothing changes. But, you know, that's why he's my uh, 102 here in Superflex rookie drafts. Yeah, I mean, the Lions could easily snag him at the two overall if they if they really wanted to. But all of a sudden, there's a whole lot more intrigue and quarterback in that top 10 in the actual NFL draft top 12 uh, than maybe there was uh, just a few months ago because it's been a, we've been in a wild period here um, and, and Malik definitely offers uh, kind of the highest upside with all those like you mentioned there is there is a Gotta whole bunch the rusher. there is a pretty much almost all of these guys uh, that that we're going to talk about quarterback wise it's you can't give really anybody the edge outside of Willis with the legs mm -hmm. they all kind of have it a little bit so that's one thing that would usually sway me one way and that kind of muddies this up again like you said, with the rest of these quarterbacks, because they all have a little bit of giddy up to them. Um, but Malik definitely has the most intangibles, maybe the most raw, but, you know, under the right tutelage could be, you know, kind of molded into a nice piece of clay there. Um, and, and I have, you know, read and, and, and listened to multiple shows, podcasts of of just how vibrant this man is in a room how much he how much respect he just commands how much he's a leader of men and that like you said we we put a lot of emphasis on between the ears how bad do you want to be good mm -hmm. and and what kind of a worker are you and and he seems like he checks those boxes so you know he's not going to let uh hard work and 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 not being a leader derail him he's not going to jamarcus russell his way out of the league oh jamarcus <laughs> um so yeah all right, you good? Ready to keep it rolling? All right, so we 103. We got old Jay Wayne. Who'd you pick here? I took Kenneth Walker, the third. Kenny Three Sticks, maybe. Kenny Three Sticks. I love it. Which I'm interested to get John's take here. Uh, I know you guys aren't huge Kenny, Kenneth Pickett. Sorry, not Kenneth Pickett. Kenneth Walker fans, uh, which, you know, I, I guess... I guess there's a little there's some concerns. I don't I don't share the great concern. You know, I feel like this dude is just he's just an instinctual runner, you know, a game breaking dude and just crushed it at Michigan State. Went to the combine, showed the elite athleticism that that we thought he had and was just just blew it out of the water. I mean, if if you want to be mad at some pass protection or lack of receptions, you know, I get that argument. I get it. But there's been plenty of backs that haven't caught a ton of balls, went on to be just fine in the NFL. And pass protection, I mean, all these guys are going to struggle. None of them get asked to pass protect a ton. So it's going to be tough to uh, – like, there's not a lot of standout pass protectors in college in general. So it's something they have to work on. I feel confident in Kenny uh, working on that and being just fine. So, I mean – He's just such an electric player with such good instinctual running skills that I just can't back off of him. He just, he just, it's like Casey's voice, just sexy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, before I jump in, if you, if you have any, um, discord on, on, uh, the, the Kenneth Walker pick here, speak now. Forever now. Hold your peace. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Now, Mitch is going to be upset with you because on Dynasty Theory, he is 
a Kenneth Walker proponent. So he would be 100% on board. He's talking about Walker at, at the 103. And we co-manage in several leagues. And we have like that 103, 104. It's going to be like a JB. struggle. <laughs> well, like he he gives in to me a lot with certain picks. Uh-huh. So I'm like, if you want to take Walker with a few of these, I get it. Yeah. We co-manage like 10 teams together. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, the concern is what he did in the receiving game in college. And, you know, it is a concern. And like you mentioned, there are other players that have lacked in the receiving game in college and gone on to be fine. I think like, I think I could see things playing out similar to like Ronald Jones to an extent, like he, he could go out there. He could, he could, you know, be a, a, a solid running back, but his value. Now here's the thing too. Like when Ronald Jones came in, I compare him to him. He wasn't a top 12 to 15 dynasty back right away right because of the way the landscape is i think people would argue that kenneth walker is a top 15 back from value from a value perspective i think right. people would talk about that so even if he goes out and has like a decent season i think he will maintain his value and i don't hate kenneth walker like he's my running back three but yeah i'm probably not going to have much of him just because i do have him behind spiller i have him in that you know, seven to eight range overall in super flex drafts. So even though I'm not out on him completely, there's going to be plenty of folks yeah, that snag him. You're probably not touching earlier. him at that point. Mm-mm. Exactly. And last right. year I, I had I, I, a decent amount of Javante shares because I had Javante as my running back too. And again, it wasn't, I hated Travis Etienne, but I didn't get him anywhere because Javante was always, on the board yeah. when ETN was gone. So it's just kind of how it played out. Right. And I think it's going to be a similar situation. So I hope Kenneth Walker, I hope he lights up fantasy scoreboards. I hope he does well, no, just not don't. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, guys, 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 I'm not the type of person to victory lap, even though I have my shoes ready right over there. <laughs> uh, no, but, you know, it, it, it all comes to the receiving game. Yeah, it really does for me. You look at his receiving uh, college dominator and there's very few guys that low down that have found success, uh, you know, more than one or two years in the NFL. So just a little red flag yeah. for me. I mean, there's also probably not too many of them that, that just did what he did on the college uh, field. Heisman candidates. A, right. Uh, but, I mean, he was first know. in missed tackles, forced second in yards, first in yards after contact. Second yards after contact per attempt, so it wasn't just like outdoing and with attempts. And he was still crushing yards after contact. Eighteen touchdowns. It's a lot like Javon, it's a lot like Javante coming out. Yeah, it re- it really is. So Except it's like, he didn't have a Michael Walker taking a bunch of Carter. of uh, Michael Carter uh, taking a bunch of targets from him, but there wasn't anybody on the Michigan State yeah. team taking the, car- targets. The Michigan from State him in general, they, they had twenty nine total running back targets. At, mm-hmm. You know, period. Sixteen of those went to Walker, and he reeled in 13-0 drops. And, and you know, the, you saw him at the combine. The hands didn't look like an issue when he did have pass catching. Op, the option to catch a pass, it didn't look like it was a, a struggle for him. And that, that's kind of what I look at when in those kind of thresholds. And then again, between the ears kind of guy that he is, he's an extremely hard worker, extremely dedicated to the craft. Uh, so that that's pass pro and catching. I just feel like when you're at that level of an athlete, like those are learned things. If you want to put the time in, you can get on that machine. You can spend extra time after practice and learn how to catch balls. Nobody loved Jonathan Taylor's pass catching accoutrement, maybe right. you know, coming into this. But and everybody you know. loved Clyde's, and he hasn't caught very many passes at all. So you know, I, I get yeah, all Clyde's, those arguments. Yeah. Another thing I've heard a knock is the transfer portal. You know, I'm not, I'm not concerned about him getting out of Wake Forest. That was a great move for him. If you look at the Wake Forest tape, which there is some to look at, he was the same guy. He was busting off, well, breaking a bunch of tackles, and it's just like sometimes people get it wrong. You know, Jamison Williams transferred, blew it up, Heisman candidate. Michael, or, you know, Walker transfers, blows it up, Heisman candidate. Like, sometimes the situation isn't right. Sometimes teams mess it up, you know? Justin Fields had to transfer. There's a bunch Joe of, Burrow. Joe Burrow couldn't get on the field. Like, it's crazy. It's like uh, so many... Teams have messed this up. It's enough teams have messed it up. Enough players have gotten a shot going somewhere else. It's just like, I yeah. can't. This man, if you're going to say he's an outlier, he's an outlier. Like, that's what he runs like. He runs like an outlier. He looks like an outlier. You know, well, if you want to. If you, if you hit the, tr- the kind of the, the, the transfer deal, like, it's not like 
they weren't using him at Wake Forest. They were basically using him like they used every other back. Like in 2020, 136 snaps for Walker and 139 snaps for Beal Smith, 119 attempts, 121 attempts. Those are the two team leaders. Like in 2019, 100 uh, or 129 snaps for Walker, 215 for uh, Carney, and 102 for Beal Smith. So they kind of had a three-man rotation going. And in that 2019 on 90 attempts, he had 555 yards and average 6.2, by far the best on the team. So it was just, it was a usage situation, and that's just kind of how Wake Forest wants to play it. So there's no chance I can hold the transfer uh, against against him. I, with that point, I 100% agree, especially with the way that uh, co- college landscape is these days. Right. You're going to have players transferring more often than not, and it's not a talent issue. Right. So that was actually a discussion point that came up on our show, and – Like it was like Mitch on one side, Dan on the other. And, you know, me, I I was kind of like Switzerland to an extent (laughs) because I I can't get on board with the transfer thing just because the way that transfer portal is, you're going to have so many players transferring. So if you hold it against this guy, you got to be consistent and hold against every single player that transfers. And at this point, it's going to be a lot. You know, and, and one thing you did mention, Jonathan Taylor, he didn't catch a lot of balls in college. But overall, that team just wasn't throwing nearly as much. He had a 10% uh, uh, receiving college dominator as as his max. Mm -hmm. And we look at Kenneth Walker, his max is right around 5. 5%. That is extremely low. But again, but but he also he also didn't get the opportunity to play to be that many years of a starter to to maybe up that that threshold. Right. And and, and I I certainly take a more analytical approach. You know, I've been you know, dipping my toes, not all the way in, just dipping my toes a little bit <laughs> in the, the film yeah, I yeah. Use air quotes, the film watching area. Um, but yeah, there, there are certain things that you got to look a little bit deeper. Cause you know, I even have my, my rookie database spreadsheet up right now and I'm looking at all the different metrics and measurables, but there are certain things that you can't see from that. And I, under, I, I get it. Yeah. So I, you know, I think you two should just have a Kenneth Walker podcast. That just, <laughs> I, I feel the passion and the we energy do. come through. Well, we got one. Check it out. I'll throw a link up. You got to have a card for the SEO. Put it in there. Boom. Yeah. But uh, and then also can handle being the number one. He had six straight games of 23, you know, or more touches. And then uh, having 264 total carries in, in 2021, fourth in total attempts. So it kind of has checks a lot of boxes. It was just one year. Um, but. I mean, I, I'm I'm all in on the on the Kenneth Walker sweepstakes. I, I, I had him one, two before we had the, the combine here as far as running backs or in a one quarterback um, so that, that nothing really changed for me there. It was just nice to see that. Yeah, he, he did go ahead and, and put a little bit of cherry on top of that. So you guys ready to move on? Let's do it. If you guys are, yeah. All right. So <laughs> you guys would shut up about Walker already. We can move along. So I hit, super flex rookie mock. We haven't even talked about another quarterback. So I hit the one four here. Still staying off the quarterbacks. I feel like there's you know you know a decent tier of the guys that I would take in a one quarterback league. That that's those about six guys. I'm probably taking all those guys before I take my first quarterback. And I took a running back here. I took Isaiah Spiller, which was a popular probably pick before the the combine. And then he was a little banged up, so he didn't do a whole lot. Um, and I feel like maybe he he might have dropped down a little bit. You got to throw um, Malik in there though in the top seven. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was just talking about a one quarterback okay, okay. Uh, situation and kind of right. how I would have them ranked. I would still take you know a lot of these guys over. But, but you're fine with Malik at two. Oh, 100 percent. Okay. Um, you better, you better be here. I'm, yeah. I'm signing off here. Yeah. Come on. hundred percent, hundred percent fine. He's got to be too. Yeah. Um, but I'm fine if you want to take him on. But anyways, Isaiah Spiller, I'm always going to lean towards if I feel like there's two, three, four running backs in this class who are better than the rest of the running backs and are at least pretty close to on par with the receivers. I'm usually going to lean running back because I feel like it's the easiest chance to replenish your stock at said position. Trading for a running back in season is extremely difficult. It's going to be the hardest position to get. You're going to have to give away so much to to, to get the the good the ones who are already proven to be really good. Um, it, it's it's just really difficult. Now we play in a league where there's where you have to start three wide receivers. All right, I'll give uh, here there. Maybe I would then move the value to Burks, Wilson, Drake. Uh, but in most leagues where it's not a communist regime and you can start uh, kind of whoever you would like um, too soon, man. Uh, too, you know, too soon. I would, I would still uh, kind of hedge towards the running backs and, and, you know, 
I'm not really sure if anybody necessarily has a problem with Spiller. I don't know. You said that Walker was your third running back. So who would is Spiller two or who's your two? Oh, absolutely. Isaiah Spiller. Okay. I think the, the 40 time is overblown. You know, he's still like for running backs. One of the things is the, the weight adjusted speed score. He still checks that box. And, you know, you don't need to go out there and have a blazing four, four, 40. You just don't need that for a running back, especially somebody of his size. So the the beautiful thing here, Isaiah Spiller, because of the, the combine, because of his pro day, I think there's a chance that that we might be able to get him. And I say we, you know, uh, Isaiah Spiller supporters at 107, 108 in some dra- in super yeah, flex drafts. I could see that. Espe- especially if some of these quarterbacks get decent landing spots, we get that first run draft capital. Spiller's probably one of those guys that is going to slip. And it's going to be a mis- mistake because I, I can't see him leaving the beginning stages of the third round in the NFL draft. Yeah. And we talk like that. That's all you need. Right. Once you get into the fourth round, as we're going to talk about with some of these other running backs, that's where you get the concern. Um, and it certainly came up last year with Michael Carter, but then we saw him have a, a very good rookie season. Mm-hmm. But I think Spiller, same thing. He, he checks a lot of the boxes. Uh you know, he, he got the passing work, uh, lacked some efficiency, but uh, he, he's going to be he's going to be a solid player. And if I can get him, you know, I have him in that three to eight tier. So I'm perfectly fine with him going. Yeah. Forward. Like I said, I think it's fairly flat here. But once you start to put in to perspective with your team needs, the the league dynamic, if you're in a league where it's completely absurd prices for running backs midseason, like you mentioned, you're going to want to take Isaiah Spiller here. And I think it's a great pick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I like the, the receiving kind of plus side with Spiller. He might have probably even been underutilized in that category. They did bring in a chain who was just a, a ridiculous uh, athlete. Uh, but kind of paired up with him. So how could you not put him on the field to kind of give you a thunder and lightning kind of deal here? A decent amount of physicality with a guy like uh, Isaiah Spiller. I said in our breakdown that he kind of leaves a crime scene behind him, uh, whether it's with his physicality or with his kind of lateral uh, agility, his footwork kind of of that of a dancer. Um kind of links kind of puts those cuts together his 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 straight ahead or or as the 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 big guys like linear uh movement is is not going to be the strong suit for him it's going to be that that left to right linking kind of stuff together and then the lower half consistently looks like the hips are just throwing off tackles and then he kind of has that physicality i likened his contact balance that is if he had training wheels on constantly you can't really tip his bike over um, so just leaves a crime scene of yeah. tacklers, would be tacklers behind him. So, it's incredible to watch. Like I'm down with Spiller. You're up, JB. Who are you taking here? Uh, I, I know there was a little bit, you know, again, it, it's kind of like like Spiller a little bit. I think he's going to slip down draft boards and I'm happy to get Traylon Burks at the 105. You know, I, I know a lot of people they're talking about, especially London and Burks. They're not like the route runners that Wilson and Alave are. But they're also not the players with an extremely disproportionate amount of contested catches, because I know that's a red flag now. There's a lot of conversations. Well, if a player had like 35% or 40% plus of contested catches in college, you look at players like uh, uh, Nikhil Harry. He was on that list. And, yeah. and that's when the red flags start to pop up. But Burks and, and Drake London, they're still not there. And I know people were concerned, not concerned. You know, he didn't go out there and run the 40 time that was expected. But at his size, a 4.55, he's, uh, I talk about the speed score, the height adjusted speed score for Traylon Burks, still upper echelon. Right. And it, it blows my mind. So still somebody that that is a, a solid route runner. Again, we look at that contested catch uh, percentage. You know, he, he broke out early age of 20 college dominators. there, receiving uh, yard market share, reception market share, uh, receiving yards per team pass attempt, freaking three and a half. Like he's just like he might not be the first wide receiver off the board, but just like we talked about with running backs and going in the first round of the NFL draft, you don't need to be the first wide receiver off the board. Yeah. Look at how often these teams, whether it's a team fit or just lack of, of management capabilities, they, they go in the wrong direction. So if Traylon Burks goes in the first round, 
his stock isn't changing for me and he's still right. my wide receiver one yeah i like it uh they, i did see a couple different places where that he he still reached a really high top speed by the time he was done mm-hmm. running his 40 uh so and that's kind of what people were putting the He's a the locomotive. It high takes test. a second for the locomotives to get going. Right. Okay. It took it took a while for um, you know, him to, to kind of get up to speed there. But when he was up to speed, it was one of the best speeds uh, GPS wise in the nation. Uh, so he does well, he, have it there. He had it's one there. of the highest MPHs recorded, and that's why people thought right, he was going to run saying. like a four two. But yep. that doesn't translate to right. the forty. I had, but they just created some value there because he ran a bad forty, and people think he's slow, which is. Silly. But it, it, it wasn't even bad for his right, size. Right, right, right. Like, well, like, but like other six. dudes were putting up ridiculous 40s. People so. were predicting 4-3, which I'm not sure why anybody thought that. But. Right. Yeah. And so I got a question. Is So is contest, contested catches, is that is that what the analytical community found to justify tri, uh, uh, Nikhil Harry busting yeah. so bad? Because he was a sure-fire thing, like... But again, if yeah, you just watch the tape, he definitely couldn't separate. He couldn't separate, <laughs> though, if you were watching the tape, you know? I, if I find – I have to find it. I, I wish I could give credit to whoever it was, but I'll throw it in uh, in our DM after the show. I want to say J.J. Orsega Whiteside was on that list. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. a, lot, a lot of guys that had yeah. first and second round draft capital, and it's like if you hit this threshold – the the chances of NFL production decreases significantly. And like I said, the, on that list, none of these guys, even Burks, even Drake London, they did not hit that threshold to put them over the, you know, towards Nikhil the dark Harry side. Harry line. Will. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to cross that. Harry. It's like the new Mendoza line. Your hands line. are freezing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go 1-6. Uh, Jay Wayne, you're up. Garrett Wilson, baby. Let's do it. If I can get Garrett Wilson at 1-6, I'm feeling pretty good. Seems like a good value. Uh, I can't be mad. If you want to take Traylon Burks, take the swing. I'm cool with that. Uh, I'm also cool trading back one spot and grabbing Garrett Wilson. I'm not mad at really any of these top three guys that you want to take. Ask me a different day. I could easily take Hotline Bling. You know, I could take Drake over over Garrett Wilson. Uh, That's why we mock it up to see how you feel and, you know, this is a situation where I could trade back a spot if I really if I if I if you could find that trade partner to not move back too far. But I just I just went with uh with, with Garrett Wilson. He seems just like a joyful blend of floor and ceiling. because uh, you know what you saw on the field. You know, you saw elite short area quickness, you saw sneaky good yak, ball skills galore, high point drink. That's the thing we do. If you say something silly, you gotta drink. Uh, high point became a word, a uh, movement. We had Angelo on, um, Angelo fantasy and he used the word movement a lot. So anytime we see, he said the word movement earlier, I had to drink, but, uh, he does, he goes up and just grabs the ball. Like I should throw up that picture where he against Clemson, <laughs> where he just went up over everybody, you know, pretty strong in the contested catch game, but I take it. He doesn't have the Nikhil Harry threshold. Not even close. And All right. But still it, it, crushing it, it, contested it, it, catches. It, it, when yeah, he needs and it ties to. in exactly with like like yards after catch, and he's not overly physical, but oh my god, does he make people miss after yeah. the catch? Yeah, he is elusive, and he doesn't need to be physical with the way he plays. Right, like, I, it, I have I have Burks, Wilson, and London in the same tier. Sure. So if anybody told me they had Wilson as their wide receiver one, you're not going to hear a peep from me. Yeah. So that's good to hear from an analytical person because the dominator and breakout age weren't that great. It's not like they weren't like, you know, amazing. They're both in the 50th, 54th and 59th respectively percentile, but he played with studs. Like that room was more stacked than Jameson Williams the clock. had to get out to, to get his shot. Could you let me finish my joke? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, like and Jameson Williams couldn't even get in there. Like throw him into the mix, he had to transfer out of there. That r- r- wide receiver room was just packed with studs, and you know, I, so I can't knock him for the dominator or really the breakout age. You know, which I, we're not huge. We don't put a ton of stock into that. We're more of a film type of, of show. Obviously, our listeners know that, and 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 we, we want to know the analytics. We want to take it into account, but I also don't want to miss on the outliers because the analytics were bad you know so that's why we like to have to put eyes on what's going on in the field and like so you see everything that he did on the field and then he goes out and crushed the combine too 
you know, ran a four three eight, which was faster than people thought he was going to run. Showed the burst with the with the thirty six inch vert and hundred twenty three inch broad, like, and those are things that you saw on film. And then even ran probably faster than he is because he ran a faster forty time than Olave. And I don't think with pads on that Garrett Wilson is faster than Chris Olave, even though the number says it on the NFL Combine, right? But people care about that stuff, and you know, that so you can take Garrett Wilson. It's a safe play. It's 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 a it's a it's a it's a floor play, but he has that athletic ceiling and that ceiling to take the top off and to crush it after the catch and to and and, and that short area elite quickness to develop into an unstoppable force in the receiving game. So pretty excited to take Wilson at one six. And you talk about how you look at it more from the film side, and he doesn't necessarily have the college dominator and the breakout age. The way I look at it analytically, and I know a lot of people, they have their models, and I'm not a model person per se. Okay. But the way I look at it is, are you hitting a minimum threshold? Yeah. And then you start to boil it down. It's like, okay, uh, you know, the, the the chances that you your hit rate increases right. significantly because you hit this minimum threshold. Yeah. And Garrett Wilson hits everything yeah the only thing the receiving yard market share a little bit low the college dominator even the but that could be understandable with- studs it, context exa- right it, exactly but if there's one box he isn't checking like he's still sliding in with ev- all the, you know going through all this criteria he slides in just behind Traylon burks yeah like like close enough for me to have them in that tier but again just like you said i think there's less of a chance for a bust in Garrett Wilson and and we have to understand that I think there is a little there's a higher chance for Burks in that category so yeah I yeah like I, I'm seeing eye to eye with you here yeah yeah well he's probably a little bit more hater on the analytics than me he likes he doesn't miss an opportunity to, to take a jab I, uh, I, the only but, reason that I hate or take jabs is because a lot of a fair amount of the analytical community are so staunch and like they can never be wrong <laughs> and and it's just which it's, you're not like that, John. I'm not taking a shot at you, dude. You no, it, it you is don't so seem true, like though. a staunch asshole at all. You seem like a really nice guy. But like that's what I can't stand. So staunch assholes bring out the staunch asshole in me, and I know it's not right. I shouldn't do it. I want to know the analytics. I want to take it into account. I believe it is a piece of the puzzle. But I also can't understand how you could never like watch the game either to because t- yeah. there is so much context. Context is such a key word. So, context baby so on, on that note i'll say that i i probably work backwards from kind of what you're saying is i like to i'll watch and then i'll go back and s- s- make sure to see if they check those kind of minimum thresholds mm-hmm. and be like okay i just watched it that kind of confirms it and then if, it, if it's even up higher th- on those really good thresholds i'm like okay hell yeah now now we're now we're cooking with some gas here and i also know that the analytical community drives a ton of value in this industry like i'm not blind to that so if a, if the analytical community gets behind a guy that makes it a little safe to take that guy because you could sell him to another analytical guy because they're going to hold out longer like but you take a guy who wasn't great analytically, but still performs well. Sometimes he still doesn't get respected because you kind of need that analytical community respect. They do drive a lot of value, so like you have to pay attention to it. And I don't mean to be a jerk. Sometimes I am, but what what can you do? <laughs> no, when, uh, whenever I bring up anything, even remotely analytics related on Dynasty Theory, Mitch and Dan, they're like. What is this witchcraft? <laughs> yeah, this, what is this this make believe? And then Dan Dan sitting there, JB, just watch the tape. What? Uh, I'm like, all right, Dan, all right, so I, <laughs> I'll do it. I, I get it. I absolutely get it. And if you go strictly from analytics, and and I was guilty of this last year, you miss out on Jalen Waddle. Yeah, right. You, know, you you miss out on several players where right. co- additional context does matter. Right. So there are certain flaws, but then you find people like yourselves that are a little bit more into the film. And like you said, once you, you blend them together, right, one hundred percent, they're all the they're all parts blend of the puzzle, together. man. It's mm-hmm. parts of the puzzle, and we we put out a Waddle video, outlier or bust, because it was it's going to be either one of those. He's mm-hmm. either going to bust. Or he's going to be an outlier because of the analytic, because of bad college dominator, bad breakout age. Uh, but you know, context there too, and watching him on film, he's fucking dirty. You know, yeah. dirty. Yeah. So, and that translated immediately. All right, boys, we're on a hard out here I know, with we JB, hurry. and you guys keep yucking it up. So we're never going to make it through this. Let's try to. Let's I can sh- bullshit with you guys all night. We're six <laughs> oh, picks in. Yeah, I could talk all night and if I, I didn't have to go on Dynasty. I Q. couldn't. I could have got not gotten past. We could still be talking about Kenneth Walker if you yeah. wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. 
please no. Please. <laughs> All right, so I'm up one seven. I'm going to take Drake London here. I think he just kind of caps off this this tier here. I like the three running backs and I like the three wide receivers here. I think that's kind of the tier break in a one QB, and then you throw Malik Willis in there in the super flex. Um, and that's that's kind of how I feel about it. I mean, we can get into all the semantics of Drake Lennon. I think he was great. I think the the, the his his intermediate and and movement and yak uh, ability is something that kind of sets him apart from from the bigger guys that would be kind of in more of his body type. But I think he moves around a whole lot better uh, than a lot of guys. And not not he obviously doesn't have the the high end speed and that crazy athleticism, but he just finds a way. Uh, to do all those things and he has you know he started off with Michael Pittman and St. Brown there and was kind of man in the slot and then he moved outside here so he's played you know 98 percent 91 percent in the slot and then this year outside uh you know a ton and played on the slot only 12 percent so kind of shows you the versatility of being able to move around and then kind of really burst onto the scene with only playing eight games this year and uh got hurt and had you know 22 force missed tackles in that time tied for six and uh 460 yards of yak in yeah. just eight games that's that's good for 27th for his size i think that's and extremely he, good he crushes contested catches but not in the kill harry uh Yep. All yeah, right. Does, All right. Does not does not hit that threshold. And you talk about the versatility, and I think this is something that USC does because, uh, you know, when I was putting my film watching hat on, I was a huge Almond Ross St. Brown guy before he got that fourth round draft capital, and then he still freaking killed it in the NFL. But he was used in multiple ways, right. lining up outside, lining up in the slot, being used out of the backfield. And you watch Drake London, the the way he was even used on bubble screens, maybe yes. not necessarily his strong point, but showing that versatility. And those are all just different ways that you can translate to the NFL and be a, a decent, good, great contributor yeah. and at that level. Throw the red zone uh, stuff right on top of that of being uh, having mm. the basketball background, knowing how to use the size, lean on somebody, then go high point uh, and and grab that grab that that TD. So I think uh, <laughs> I think lots to like about Drake, and uh, let's let's keep it moving here. So JB, you're up at one eight. You go on quarterback. Is the next quarterback off the board? Is someone finally going to take a quarterback? No, so I'm going to go wide receiver. Love it. And I I told you guys when we were doing our draft, I said, I have some talking points here. I I need to see that first round draft capital for Pickett. And I think we're going to get it. I want to see. You're going to get it. Oh, he's going to get it. Hey, you just want to see if eighth of an inch bigger on the hands, baby. He's doing those stretches. He's doing those stretches. (laughs) Uh, Sam Howell. I'm doing those stretches too. Sorry. I think they're probably. (laughs) I think there'll be three. I think you're going to end up with three first round quarterbacks here. Just because. It's just you're, kind of you're the way lengthening it's pan something out. else over there, not your hand. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, who's the third? I don't know who it's going to be. Is okay. it going to be Hal? Is it going to be Corral? Is it going to be Ritter? Somebody? Ritter I think somebody's going to be going to reach it. But even if it's thirty-two, like a Lamar Jackson, or or you know, well, if it yeah, was, we're, 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 oh, so go ahead. Well, I'm I'm just saying if it if it wasn't super flex, you know, I'm I'm all in on this Jameson Williams pick. Even with it being super flex, I'm totally fine. Being yeah, I'm in too. Hit, hit, hit your points, bro. <laughs> so this is going to be different post NFL. Once okay. we get that that draft cap, that, like I said, the last piece of the puzzle. But Jamison Williams, it, it, it ties in with Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, all of those guys. Uh, Power Five conferences early declares, which is another thing that you want to see analytically from these guys going in the first round. Is the injury a concern? Yeah, a little bit, but it still sounds like he's getting that first round draft capital. So I don't care. The only time that we should start to care about these things, if the NFL seems to be concerned, because obviously they're seeing behind the scenes a lot more things that we're not seeing where you see people slip and you're like, oh, what's going on there? And that's like, okay, well, there were character concerns. There were medical issues. Medical, yeah. And and that's something that I don't think we're going to see. But again, the receiving yards per team pass attempt, 2.75. He's checking every other box. The only thing that is a little concerning, his 40 time, 4.45, fantastic, but – at a buck seventy nine, man. If I, I wish I could weigh a buck seventy nine again. Holy cow! Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, but but there were guys that don't hit that weighted or height adjusted speed score that are still fantastic in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, so it, even it, though it, he doesn't, ch- he doesn't check that one box. But you could consider team, that box check, dude. He's yeah. fast as fuck. <laughs> Like that, yeah, that, and that's that's, that's just, not a real time. Like he's probably still working his way. Like he was able to do that on a on a rehab. I'm assuming that's at the pro day, right? Because he didn't run it at the combine. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was 
A projected. Thanks for calling that out. It was a, a projected that I had as a placeholder in there. Yeah. Nah, he's fast so, as fuck. So maybe he's running a four four five uh, on one leg. Who knows? Right. Uh, right. Uh, no, thank you for calling that out. But yeah, like 108. A perfectly fine. Again, I think he gets that first round draft capital. Checks a lot of the boxes analytically. He's look so at what fast. he did at Al- look at what he did at Alabama. Yeah. And when I put these placeholders in, I did go on the more conservative side. So that four four five probably looks pretty fucking stupid. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Jameson Williams, 108 here, even in super flex. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm okay with it as well because you're just you're taking a big swing for a guy who just fucking wrecks games and consistently. Game you, he's, he either puts you away in the first quarter or he puts the dagger in your heart in the fourth. And he he you just one slip up and and he's money. I'm fine with that, especially with not knowing quite where the quarterbacks are going to fall and quite what you're getting with the quarterback. So I'm okay with that. I like it, actually. That's what I would do. I would have taken Jamison, too. All right. You got anything else, JB? We're going to go to J-Dub. Nope. J-Dub all you, baby. All right. Well, I held off as long as I could, but I finally took the second quarterback. I was thinking that one of you two would do it for me, and I wouldn't have to decide or or make the call. Uh, I could have easily, you know, taken George Pickens. That would have been the home run cut. I feel like Pickett is kind of like a safe stab here to take, especially in Superflex. Um, he might not have as much upside as a player like Pickett or Pickens, excuse me. Uh, but, you know, having that extra quarterback in Superflex also has its own type of dynasty upside. And so, you know, this isn't a draft where you're going to fix your Superflex problems. Like you can take swings. You know, you can take, and it's nice that you can take swings here at the end of the first round. Like you can, you're still a lot of swings to be taken, and maybe with landing spots, maybe these all guys, you find some you like, they shift up a little bit, and it kind of, you know, opens the landscape. But I feel pretty good about Pickett as my number two quarterback. You know, he can make all the throws. Um, he's really strong in the pocket, has a good feel for it with awareness. That pocket presence is really good. Great escapability, which he's not known necessarily for his rushing, but it av- did average 5.6 yards per attempt and, and had five rushing touchdowns. And he beat up Clemson on the ground. Now, he only had four rushes for 18 yards, but all four of those rushes were first downs. He was just killing us on third down, and that's the key. He's extending drives, keeping the game alive. Like he can, he can manage a game, and 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 he can make. You know, he's got pretty good touch and good and good deep ball. You know, good velocity, um, and and he can get yards on the ground too. Uh, let's see. I think he had. Ah, man, I had the stat somewhere. I don't know, but when he he did play Clemson, and there was there was one rush where he dove head first for that first down to really keep a drive going on third down. That was absolutely outstanding. Um, the, the the I guess the only downside is is it did take a while for him to really ascend here. But what you just saw, you really liked, and now he had three years with with Whipple there as his as his coordinator, and you being a Pittsburgh guy, what, what's your thoughts on on Pickett here? Twenty eight attempts for four hundred forty four yards. Just wanted to get that in there. There you go. Uh, yeah, and I, I think a little bit you, you start to get that like reverse bias almost. You're like I, I've seen him for a few years here in Pittsburgh, hasn't really done that that much. But look at the weapons he had in the receiving game. Pitt is typically a, a strong running team, but they opened it up here, especially in 2021, and with with the emergence of Jordan Addison, Addison he's going to be a first. Stud. He's going to be a first round pick in 2023 in the NFL draft. You know. Uh, so having that weapon, being able to build that rapport, the only thing, and I'm interested to get your thoughts here, you know, watching him and, and watching Pitt on a weekly basis here in Pittsburgh, he has escapability and he can extend plays. But I think at times, and I don't know, maybe this is something that's correctable. Maybe it's something he can work on, but I feel like he bails out of a clean pocket too early. And I, I feel like that comes up and then you watch him and he, he, he it's like a self flush out of the pocket and then he's forced to make a, a throw on the run which isn't always accurate or he's checking out of bounds when if he would have just stayed in the clean pocket who knows what would have happened there yeah. but overall again I, I just it's for quarterbacks we want that first run draft capital and I, I when we did this first round it was before their pro day and a lot of things were coming out after and there's some GMs and uh execs saying, Pickett's not making it out of the top 10. Like that, that was a quote from an, uh, some, I think it was an anonymous executive. He's not making it out of the top 10. People love him. So if, if we get that, 
these quarterbacks are going to start creeping up draft boards once rookie season comes, rookie draft season comes along. Yeah, I could definitely see him going top ten just because you got to take a swing on a quarterback, and he does seem mm-hmm. like he has the type of demeanor to to carry a room and carry a team, and he seems like a pretty tough individual. Um, he battles. He battles. He does, and and maybe he does escape the pocket a little too soon. That that can happen, but you know, it definitely has escapability. And I think can't he might have had alive. the longest amount of like. Uh, time with the ball in his hands like he 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 holds the ball for for a while i think that on the pff i I think that that was a a stat that he was a leader in and then if you really if i got some straight facts he broke dan marino's all-time passing record for touchdowns (laughs) and yards so i mean that's That's what happens when you go to college for eight years (laughs) van wilder over there can you pick it simmons is old Yeah, yeah he is a little old uh only threw two picks under pressure didn't take very many sacks either 29th in sacks uh, with 27, and then you know the the, uh, the measurables ran a 4.73, 75th percentile 40, and and the burst score even higher. So you, you see that athleticism, and I just feel like it's a pretty safe pick in Superflex to take Kenny Pickett this deep in the first round. Yeah, double double gloves on the tiny hands. Also another played little in bit pit, of a concern, man. It's cold as fuck. Let, had, I mean, had 27 uh, fumbles, which I believe is is the uh, league leading for quarterbacks. Uh, so because it's devastating to my case, <laughs> uh, but I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I like Kenny Pickett. All right. Uh, 110. I took George Pickens. Uh, I have George Pickens kind of in a tier with Jamison Williams. I know that's maybe a little higher for some people, but I I really like what what Pickens has. He's got the breakout age for you, 18.5. But I I think he just kind of has that between the lines arrogance. And I I just got that kind of competitor in him. He's kind of got he's tall and rangy, moves well for a bigger guy. Um, he's got the physicality in his in his repertoire. You could see if you watch the film when, when there's pressed up guys on him on a blocking play, he he comes off that ball and there's multiple times where he just shoves the D back completely to the ground. Um, and you know, I think he does offer you know a, a nice deep threat there. He can take the top top off, but then also work that intermediate and short uh, area for you, kind of a QB's best friend. I really like what you're getting in George Pickens. I've I've I've, I've fell, fallen pretty pretty in love with Pickens here. Um, I was a big you know I probably had Terrace Marshall in kind of the same range that the two ten uh, or one ten one twelve two one range, and I also really liked him. And I was a big Hakeem Butler guy. All guys that could move pretty well for a bigger guy and have versatility. Big Cortland Sutton guy. Pickens gives me kind of Sutton style vibes where where just isn't a prototype isn't mike williams as a big guy can move around as a big guy which no shot to mike williams but just maybe offers a little bit more versatility and i've really been enjoying uh pickens and then you know obviously had the acl came back uh but uh thoughts on pickens here over the quarterbacks i have him in the next tier of receivers but you know pickens alave and dotson you know like we're arguing over one or two spots right, here, right? You know, so it's I, I don't hate the pick. I was glad you didn't take my guy. Yeah, um, but I think Pickens he, he's gonna be a fine receiver. Probably get second round draft capital, but again, that's fine. You know, yeah. for quarterbacks, you won first run. What if he goes first? Uh, he's going. Oh, he very well. He could. I don't think he's going th- first. No, no, not enough production. A little Probably bit of not. a hurt. Got hurt. I could see him going in the third, honestly. Drop and that's still third, that, that's huh? not a death right. sentence. No, no, I'm still in. Yeah, yeah. Still All right. In. Well, who's your guy, JB? You got the next pick. Yeah, you're up. You're up next. Yeah. So I'm going with uh, finally. Well, I say finally. I took Malik Willis at 102, but going another quarterback here uh, for the thousandth time. This should have been for your drinking game. We want that first round draft capital, baby. Yeah. Draft capital. Uh, that's so your word, John. Draft, we're yeah, we're going with draft capital. That's it. So I, I think all of your listeners are going to be hammered at this point if they're drinking <laughs> yeah. it when I say that. But, uh, you know, the deep ball isn't great. If he could land somewhere with a, a, a great receiver that loves to run a slant, oh, my God, that receiver is going to have 250 targets in his first year. But uh, let, let's get in the first round. Uh, one thing I like about him, I know he injured the ankle there towards the end of the season. I think it was in October. He injured the other ankle, played through an entire yeah. game on one bad wheel. And I wish I remember what game it was that they, they, they lost it, I believe. But like you talk about Pickett being a warrior and going out there and getting licked and getting back up. Uh, Matt Corral, he, he's the same way. 
you know, playing through injuries, wants to compete. He wants to be out there. Uh, and I, I think that is going to translate to a player that's going to demand the respect of his teammates and be a leader. So kind of going off the field with, yeah. with some of the things here. Played but in that I, bowl game, didn't have to, got hurt, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Should have sat. Just Should have sat. Should, should have sat. <laughs> yeah. Penny but you Pickett's like to sitting, see that. You know you like Penny to. Pickett sitting there like, I sat, I sat. Right, a lot uh, of yeah. dudes sitting. Then those yeah, tiny I, hands it, came back to bite him. <laughs> yeah, but listen, it, I get it. If I if I had a few million dollars sitting in front yeah, of me, yeah, I'd be sitting. A lot of the times, a lot of the times, they say their teammates are like, "Hey, man, just sit." It's right, like we right. want you to sit. I had like, this, yep. I had this fight with my in laws who were like, "Yeah, but if you were the fan of that team, I'm like, who gives a fuck about the fans? Get that money, set your family yeah. up." And when I put it in those terms, I'm like, "You can set your family up and your family's family and your kids' kids' kids up for life if you do it right." And it's millions and millions of dollars if you get hurt. Those teams, those the, the colleges, the, the NFL owners, nobody gives a fuck about the health of these players. No. These boys need to get what they can get when they can 100%. get it. I'm 100% for them. Always holding out for more. Get what you can get because they don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. 100% agree. So with the with the picks here, you know, the quarterbacks, it's all of them have the yeah buts and that's really the problem with with taking any of them here. I don't have a strong conviction of any of them. I think Pickett's definitely two and then out of Corral, Howell and and Ritter and I guess if you want to throw Carson Strong in there, I I I honestly mm -hmm. Don't <laughs> I honestly mm -hmm. don't have a strong conviction. It's, you know, they all have the rushing upside. Um, they all have pretty decent competitive toughness. They all seem to be guys who the, the team likes, guys who guys on the team kind of flock to. Um, Corral kind of plays in a little bit of a QB friendly system here and and maybe does take off a little bit. Like you were saying with with Kenny Pickett takes off a little bit more and, and kind of has a one read, get the ball out. Uh, but but he also does a lot of things really well. So I, I don't know who to take and I'm, I'm I don't I have no problem with taking Corral here. Um, if that's your guy, so. All right, next yeah. pick, me. Yeah, you're up. One twelve, round out this first be, round. Be right back. You hammer this though. I really wanted to take uh, quarterback, but I was like, I just don't, I just don't know, uh, and I feel pretty safe about the guy I did pick. I took, I took Chris Olave. I think it's a good swing to take. He's a make your day and one play kind of guy. Obviously a fast dude who gets behind defenses, makes that comeback route unstoppable. He's an overall really strong route runner, does run a variety of routes, which you don't see as much at the college level. Um, just, just, you know, has the breakout age you're looking for, 19.2 in the 85th percentile. Uh, college dominator, not the worst at 31.9%. Again, in that wide receiver room at Ohio State, right? More stacked up than the skeletons in Urban Meyer's closet. Ah, got the joke in. Uh, just a <laughs> stacked wide receiver room, right? Like, I'm talking Andy Reid at IHOP stacked. You know, pancakes up to the ceiling. Uh, just And so for these guys to still ball out, show the numbers they did, show the production, when there's that much productivity around, I can see why the dominator's a little bit lower, which you being the analytical guy, clear this up for me. Uh, college dominator, is that your best year or it's the whole, it's your whole career, correct? Oh, it's, it's based off your best. And then there's different ways to do it. I, I, uh, subscribe to the Dave Wright method, uh, FF spaceman on Twitter. Okay. Uh, gr great follow, but it's a combination of your best year and your final year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, it's based on, uh, the mark chair reception yards and market share receiving touchdowns. Okay. So, you know, it, it could certainly be bolstered for one or another, but overall, and again, you, you say it's it's not like top of the line, still hits that minimum threshold that right. I'm talking about. Right. 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 Which is what? 30%? Uh, right around 25%. 25. Drop -off. That's the minimum you threshold. See, you start okay. to see a drop off. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I've gone Did through I, and I've looked, I've looked at it like 50% plus like 50 to 40. You, you look at all this and just tinker and across the board, there's not a huge. And when you look at one variable by itself, it's trash. You can't just look at one, but then you start to, okay, first run draft capital, early declare college dumber, even though a lot of a was not an early declare. That's one of the things that a lot of analytics folks are going to dislike about him, but still he, just I, I keep saying checks all the boxes. Could have been uh, though. 
Re- right. Receiving yards per team pass at time. But Alave, he's one of those guys. It's like, would you rather him come out early and be a second round draft pick? Or would you rather him stay and elevate his stock the way he did? And now he's yeah. a first round draft. Like he very well could have gone in the second of the NFL draft last year. He goes back. He makes himself some extra money like we just talked about. Yeah. And he he elevates his stock. You know, again, I have him in this back into the first tier. Yeah. And I, I like the pick. Did I, I make a mistake not taking a quarterback? You like Time the pick. Tell, I, I like the pick. I think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I probably would have gone Sam Howe. That's who first. I was going to take. That's who but, I was. But, but but again, we're going to find like, like I would love to revisit this or even just DM and bullshit with you guys in five weeks. And we look back at this and we're like, oh, my God, what the hell were we doing? <laughs> right. We, or like, and I'm already doing that. I talked about uh, before the show with Jalen Wittermeyer. I take him in the third and then he's still running his 40. Right. Like, like, there's right. so many things that are still changing yeah. here. But yeah, a lobby is a fine pick. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people probably where I took Pickens, a lot of people most would maybe swap Olave with Pickens. I, I'm I'm a little lower on Olave. I like Olave. I think he's maybe a, I think he's going to end up possibly being a guy who's better for the actual team that he plays on the NFL with for things that he does for them rather than maybe your fantasy lineup week to week. Um, whereas you know he certainly can is a game breaker and can explode, but um, I think. I think there may be a little bit more value he provides for an actual team than maybe your fantasy lineup. And that's kind of semantics. Uh, but um, I right. probably would have taken Hal as well. Over Olave? Yeah. Or or any, yeah, Hal or Ritter or whatever, you know, however you like to drag those quarterbacks up. Okay. Well, we made it through 12 picks. We're already an hour <laughs> in, JB. I know you got places to be, things to do. Do we need to wrap this up? How are you looking? Yeah, let, let's go. Let's go like eight more minutes here. Okay. okay. Let's, let's ram them out. We'll hammer Very them out. Precise. So I'm up next. I went Sam Howell. We're kind of in that same vein of quarterbacks. Again, they're all kind of mobile. Sam Howell, true freshman, Florida State, flopped uh, to, to UNC. Then he has that great 2020 uh, with a pretty good supporting cast. And he has a 2021 that's that's still, you know, half decent, but doesn't really have a whole lot to to. to throw to and do his thing and then he comes out and has like 76 attempts for a thousand yards um and, and shows off 65 that, missed force tackles sh- shows off that that sturdy frame and kind of what he can do on the ground a strong elusive rating um and and just cannon um and i, I you know i think he's he's got a pretty effortless uh deep ball whereas but not super accurate i feel like a lot of these guys deep balls weren't super accurate all the time they all can make the throw but it's not where it needs to be consistently um but you know i i I do like sam howell i guess you were hoping i i can recall being in 2020 and and saying how he was going to be a first round nfl draft pick and now it seems like it's cool to good a little bit but um, I, I still like what's there and what could be, so I, I'm fine with with Sam Howell. I might slightly give him the edge over Corral, but um, I haven't really made up my mind either way yet. So, uh, quick synopsis here until we move on to the next two two. Uh, yeah, I have jo- Jahan Dotson, uh, Penn State stud receiver. Love it. Lacking. This is kind of like my lacking early declare. Th- threshold tier you know it's chris alave Jahan dotson uh i'm gonna talk about the other receiver here okay in three picks perfect but yeah the Jahan dotson like i said he, he's there at 202 for me i think that would have been uh my pick as well i could i could make an argument for for him over at either one of those other quarterbacks as well uh corral or, or how i just I guess I'm say I'm kind of down on the quarterbacks a little bit. Um, basically, for me, the quarterbacks are going to be whichever one of those kind of last those three: Hal Ritter, Corral, or Left. That's the one that I'm going to probably try to target. Um, so two, three. Who you got, Jay Wayne? So I might have taken a little bit of a reach here, trying to make a stand. I'm taking Zamir White. Uh, I could have taken Ritter. Probably maybe a little safer of a play to take Ritter. Um, I'm not mad. You want to take David Bell, Christian Watson either? Um, I, I just. The running back positional scarcity is 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 really why I took this. And 
Zamir White, you don't have the stats. I can't read off a bunch of stats that he crushed. You know, only had 161 attempts, 859 yards, 5.3 yards per carry. He's over there with James Cook, who was crushing targets, had 90 uh, attempts to go with. Um, actually, he didn't crush that many targets. I'm actually surprised at how much love James Cook is getting on the receiving end, given the production that he had. But still... When Zamir White's on the field, you kind of know what he's doing, so he's kind of up against it to begin with. You know, you know, he didn't have a ton of rushing or uh, receiving uh, numbers, right? Nine targets, caught eight of them for seventy-two yards. It's going to be low on that threshold, right? Um, but then came into the combine and, and blew it up four four forty. You know, fast as shit. You can see that on film. He has a seventy-five yard rush on his on his repertoire. He can take it the distance. He is electric. You know, he, his nickname is Zeus. He can that electricity and 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 then just the punishing style and and then. Also, I feel like he's a fairly safe pick because I know he's not going to bust. This dude, character-wise, is next level. Like, he is just what he had to get through just at birth to get to get to the point where, I mean, he's he's been through, um, he had to have kidney surgery, right? Cleft, left, cleft lip, cleft palate. The doctors gave him, like, two weeks to live. They actually told his mom that she should abort him. Like, that's how bad it was. For him to just to make it into this world, then you know he has the two ACLs early on, late in his senior year, and then tears his other ACL again in his freshman year, and then battles back from that to like be one of only four backs to have um, two thousand rushing yards or something. Like he's up in he's there's some stats that I could read off career wise that put him up in the echelon of the Todd Gurleys and the Nick Chubbs, and you know and Nick Chubbs a great example. Didn't catch a ton of balls, neither did Zamir, but when you watch him at the combine, it looked fairly handsy. And then you you, you put, pair that up with the with the electricity, and then what you see on film, which is just uh, just an incredible running machine. Um, I just I'm excited to take Zamir White. Might have been a little bit of a reach here. Probably could have taken a couple higher ceiling picks, or maybe gone safer with taking a quarterback stab. But man, Zamir White. Watch him get. I mean, maybe the NFL teams shy away from him in draft capital wise because of those two knee injuries. But Nick Chubb had a huge knee injury too. You know. And that was later on in his career. So what do you got, JB? All I'm going to say is it, it was perfect segue there. I actually think Zamir White's going to be one of those players that when he lands in the third round, people in the fantasy community, oh, whoa, he has those injuries. What's going on? Doesn't have the receiving work. But I think he's one of those guys that the NFL is going to like a little bit more than the fantasy community. Yeah, I, th- Boom, I think yeah. so too. He looks he looks great on film. Super aggressive. Got, got great uh, – the, the cuts are super sharp, a lot of wiggle. Um, I, I probably have another a couple of receivers ahead of him and then and then a tier. Uh, probably have him higher than most, but not quite that high. So let's move on to the next pick. It's me. I took Desmond River. It's Ritter. It's the last quarterback. I just like I said, I'm going to go ahead and stab on that last quarterback available. Um, not going to break down too much Ritter here, mostly because I know you're up against it. Um, and I want to hear uh, the next pick at 2-5, which I feel like – once you took it, I was like, damn, that's who I really wanted to take. But I felt like I had to take the quarterback, and which I'm actually kind of surprised. Well, I guess not. I'll let you uh, go with it. Two, five. Who'd you take here? Oh, I-, I took David Bell. And I was not concerned with the fact that he ran, what, a four, six, five. That was you expected. Know, I-, I, talk- I talk about those projected times that I had in there. I really didn't have to change him too much. So people were saying, well, what's going on here? David Bell, he, he he's a good route runner. He's going to go out there. He, the way he wins, it's not necessarily going to be a speedster. And we knew that. No. My only concern is, does it impact his NFL draft capital? Because I thought he goes in the, the second, maybe like top 50 picks. But, you know, that's my only concern. Whereas you look at players like we talk about Jalen Wittermeyer, we talk about uh, Kyron Williams later on. Well, we won't get to him, but those are guys who, based on their pro days, based on their uh, combine results, there is going to be a drastic negative impact for their draft capital. That's the only time I really care about this. You know, I don't want to say it's irrelevant, but if the NFL isn't going to adjust and it falls in that range of where we expect them to go, I'm okay with it. And David yeah. Bell, as long as he still goes in that second round, 
that the combine really doesn't do anything for me there. But I, I worry a little bit. There's some I, some murmurings. Maybe it does impact that. I almost think that I, like it's all all that kind of stuff you just said is almost built into where you're getting him right now. Like exactly because if, if he would have lit up the combine, he's got all the other like he's got the analytical side, you know, in spades. Um, mm -hmm. as far as breakout age and dominator and target share and all that kind of stuff is, is super high uh, ranking, I believe, for him. Um, and if he would have lit up the combine, he would have certainly been up in the first round because he, he just he understands it. He's been he was the Gatorade player of the year in Indiana. He's been a super high pick. He burst onto the scene as a as a as a freshman um, outshine Rondell Moore uh, multiple times out on the field there. Uh, and like you said, he when you watch him, you already knew what it was. You knew that he wasn't going to come out there and 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 absolutely lit it up, light it up at the combine because he he wins as a technician. He wins in nuanced ways. He just he he knows exactly where he's supposed to be and where the open spot on the field is and how to manipulate that. And then he's got a certain amount of physicality to him. We talked we haven't talked about it much here, but there isn't a whole lot of big sturdily built receivers in this class necessarily and he kind of is one of those guys a six two in the in the 200s um so you know a lot of these guys the 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 dotsons and the wilsons and uh some of the other uh wide receivers in this class they're all like a buck 80 like mm -hmm. you know lava yeah so uh kind of just gives you a different brand here and i i think he i think his game is going to transfer really well to the nfl with that being said i do feel like we've kind of talked about this multiple times there's definitely a pretty wide range of outcomes for david bell if he busted it'd be like ah maybe he just wasn't quite athletic enough but you know you have the jarvis landry type guys out there who were the slowest out of their class and they he's got the most catches out of that entire draft class um out of any of those wide receivers so people you know. look at cooper cup right there, you know there, there's there's rumblings that he's still running his 40 time to this day you know <laughs> right. like right. like they, it, it's not a death sentence. Like Jerry Rice ran a bad forty. You know? Yeah, what was like four seven five or something? Like yeah, high four sixes. Absurd. I think. Yeah. yeah. So did we just hear that David Bell is the next Jerry Rice? Is that I think so. I think that's what we we should probably wrap it up on that. Let you get out of here. <laughs> Straight facts. I wanted to get you to your pick here. We keep it um, 100. We went. We definitely went long, but we had a tripod and we had a new guy who had a, had a lot of good takes here. Uh, but we and a really, difference of opinion, which we right. really like. We really appreciate you joining us. I know you have your pod to jump on, so plug that one more time for us and where we can find that. Yep, it's on uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Dynasty Theory FF. We're live every Tuesday night on YouTube. Uh, typically, it was ten o'clock, which it's going to be again tonight. Starting next week, we're going to be nine o'clock Eastern time. It's myself at the Bauer Club, uh, Mitch Sorensen at Dino MC, and then Dan Lamagna at FF Coach Dan. Uh, in all of our episode descriptions, we have links for the Discord, the Patreon. We're doing a lot of things. We're having a live NFL draft party. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come check it out. Guys, I could have talked with you guys for hours upon yeah. hours. This, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, man. Likewise, let's do it again. We'll get you on the books. We'll have you back on post-draft, reassess some of this stuff, look at some of the draft cap at all. <laughs> Uh, drink but no we talked to a lot of guys we you know this is our off season of guests and and everybody that we talked to or, or a lot of the people we talked to said hey go look go check out john bauer bring him on and, and yeah. be a good guest so appreciate you coming on man spending some time with us giving us some of your your uh well well a hard-earned time and uh can't thank you enough and we'll, we'll do it again all right. Well, John had to drop off. He had to go fulfill other podcasting duties. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll bring him back for the outro that we already recorded. But we wanted to go ahead and interject here at the end of this thing and give you the rest of this draft. Press on, and we'll we'll at least get through the second round with some with some talking, and then kind of that that third round we'll we'll ride through it. If you have any talking points, we'll 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 hit them. But that that that's also going to be, you know that. The third, fourth rounds, those are going to be changing a lot depending on who gets drafted, where and what. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll eventually have a show where it's these are our guys in the later rounds that we'll that we're going to be targeting uh, in, in basically every single draft. So uh, we'll give you a view of those third rounders, but let's press on through the second here. Uh, JB just finished up at two five with David Bell. I think is a nice pick. And now you're up at, at two six. Yep. Just taking. I feel like I'm going to go chalk here. And take the best player available in terms of the hype right now, the the value that he's probably going to carry, which is Christian Watson. Uh, it's really hard to evaluate this guy. Find, hard to find 
good tape to watch, you know. Uh, there's some highlights. There is some all-22s, but it's kind of tough to get a handle on it. He does make some nice wild plays. Uh, they did run the ball a lot there at North Dakota State, but then, you know, a lot of hype building up from starting at the Senior Bowl, carried that into the Combine where he just blew it up, 4 3 6 40, 38 and a half inch vert, 136 inch broad, just a phenomenal athlete at 6'4", 208 pounds. So he's a specimen, and he did himself some favors and is going to up that draft capital and, uh, you know, be be a pretty good swing to take. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's it's appropriate right now once these five quarterbacks are gone. Took my boy Zamir White already. Let me get Christian Watson. Second round, if you want to just start swinging for upsides, fine with that. Fine with that for, you know, after that big tier of – really good guys in the first round that we've been talking about if you want to swing for upsides which i think is what you're doing with jameson and pickens uh so i'm down with that and olave could certainly be in there for most not for me but i i understand that i could be completely wrong and i could understand that that maybe you have olave even up in that tier or higher than those guys uh, but watson is is the prototypical size speed guy that yeah you want to take a shot take a shot sounds good to me um, so now we're on to two seven. This is tight end premium. So this was kind of the, the line of demarcation where I felt like we could start looking at tight ends. Um, for me, I know a lot of people, it's Trey McBride and I, Hey, I'm, I, I could be again, completely wrong here. Um, and maybe you should just take McBride, but I went ahead and took Isaiah likely here. And this could honestly change with the draft. We just saw Jalen Weidermeyer, who was when we had Angelo on, he at the beginning of this offseason kind of had him pegged as maybe the best tight end in the class right now. Um, which this today came out that he ran a super slow 40 and they, he got taken in the third round of this mock, which he probably won't even be taken in the third round of the, at this point because I don't know where he's going to end up in the NFL draft. And so likely could end up being pushed way down. And then the clear cut answer is McBride. And maybe people will say that is the answer anyway, uh, which is fine. But I'm going to make a case for likely here. The reason I'm going with a guy like likely is because he plays this position a little bit more like a wide receiver. When he's out there, he looks like just a big wide receiver. And on the guy, a lot of the guys that have mostly had success kind of, uh, you know, I'm not going to say they all play the F position, which is a little bit more of slot move out wide. Maybe you get a little fullback snap. You kind of move them all around a little bit and, and, to the traditional inline tight end, which, you know, McBride just looks like that more traditional guy. Now McBride had a hundred and, 21 targets and caught 90 balls you know absolutely crushed it that's ridiculous wide receiver numbers um but uh likely i just feel like moves around better looks better as as that new the new age of of tight ends that you're looking for game breaking um, ability too, oh, like crushing the seam deep down the field like you didn't see that it's on you didn't see those big ass plays from McBride no when you're no, watching and, the tape you see the big splash plays, right which, might be a little bit different in competition, but right. But I mean, you could tell that he's a great athlete out on the field there, and and you know had the lower leg injury in 2020 that did require surgery after the year, but still put together a great year. He averaged 20.7 yards per catch. Um, that's number one out of all tight ends. Pitts was at 17.8 um, in line, 62% of the time. Slot 24% of the time. Wide 10% of the time. Six in yards per route run was 2.75. Ninth in yards uh, per reception 7.8. 7.14 in contested catch rate number one and uh missed tackles force that's good he had 10 of those that's a pretty decent number for a tight end um third and a dot 13.7 uh Pitts was 13.1 had a long of 75 and you know he was the fifth overall tight end uh when they do the conglomerate scoring for pff there in in, in 2020 um and just absolutely slated this guy has five touchdowns over 50 yards from the tight end position that's ridiculous and then in 2022 he just you know kind of or 2021 kind of blows it open here 70 targets 52 catches 816 yards 10 touchdowns that's good for number one third in yards per route run uh, with 3.0 fourth in yak with 369 and now that's but that's that's only on 52 targets i believe uh, mcbride is has more yak than he does uh, he has 465 uh, but he had 91 receptions so you know 20 more opportunities uh, to get more yak. So that, that, that's a ridiculous performance by Likely, who had moved up the slot percentage in 2021 to 38%, in line 57%, only had one drop. Um, and then kind of getting back to just the projection of like, when you talk about Kelsey, Andrews, Hawk, Ertz, Pitts, like 
all those guys play the tight end position, but it's mostly receiver at the tight end position, the mismatch. And I feel like likely gives you the best opportunity to give you that mismatch. Whereas McBride plays a little closer to the line of scrimmage, a lot of little shallow outs and, and things of that nature, which, you know, isn't a bad thing. And it's just, it looks like he's built a little sturdier. They're actually kind of similar in, in height weight. But when you look at one to the other, one kind of looks like a little bit of a, just this big wide receiver. And the other one looks just like a big kind of traditional tight end. Uh, but so I went with likely here. He was my favorite coming into this. When we talked to Angelo, I said, I had him as the one I, I've, I've still got him there. I really enjoy him. Uh, so we'll see how that kind of plays out. But I, I took Isaiah likely there. Uh, All so right. first tight end and t- this is tight end premium, by the way. So again, receptions are going to be king for tight end premium and really elevate guys. I feel like Pitts or uh, yeah, Pitts. Uh, I feel like likely is more likely had to throw one of those in there uh, to be uh, that kind of tight end to garner a bunch of receptions. Even though McBride just pretty much led the entire league in receptions. So two eight. Here comes Sky Moore. That was a JB pick. Um, I love that. I, I got Sky Moore right up in that tier, um, in, in the next tier of wide receivers. How can you trust um, a wide receiver wearing the number twenty four? Well, he didn't wear. He only wore twenty four. Uh, I think last two years ago. I think he switched numbers, or I don't. He he switched numbers. I think through all every year, maybe. Well, it's because because um, he played all those other positions, or that was in high school. No, he he he's only been playing. Uh, wide receiver for three years so he didn't know what numbers um, he, he played pick. corner and safety and then when he got um over to western michigan they were like hey we're put you in the receiver room here um and whoopty duped him and he's okie okay, doped him um but 26 missed tackles force that's good for first um 30 Four percent out of the slot, sixty-five percent out wide. But throughout his career, he kind of played a little bit more out wide. The first year, played a lot of slot. This and in, in the second year, and then this third year, he kind of had a nice mixture. Um, and he's one ninety-five, two hundred pounds. He's ran a four-four, pretty fast guy. Uh, Yak was five hundred and twelve. Let's go for sixteenth in in twenty twenty-one. Three drops. Uh, I believe he had 90 receptions or something, 95 receptions, something along those thresholds, uh, 90 receptions, 10 touchdowns, 117 targets. Um, so hasn't been playing long and just sh- shows the ability to kind of move around the field. Probably will be a little bit more in the slot, maybe at the pros, but I like the versatility. I like the toughness. I like the speed. Uh, he's, he's already a really good route runner coming from the other side of the ball, kind of knowing what uh, DBs are leaning on for tells from receivers, I always like that where Eskridge was kind of in the same uh, mold where he hadn't played uh, wide receiver a whole lot. Um, and I, I like him. I liked him coming into the league. Um, obviously, I didn't have Russell Wilson anymore. But Sky Moore, is, is, is I think this is very properly rated Sky Moore. If you wanted to take Sky Moore over Watson and over the tight end, I wouldn't be upset with that at all. Uh, all right. So let's move to the 2-9 pick. And I, I think you were, you know, slobbering all over yourself for this one so who, who'd you take here well it just seemed like the right pick but the more i dig into it like uh, the more i might i might think this might be a little bit of a reach but i took rashad white um i mean he's just he's he's uh, a decent swing at this point in the draft in my opinion has the size six foot 214 blew up the combine 448 38 inch vertical 125 inch broad has 43 receptions in 2021. Right. His hands are super soft and he moves really well for that that 6 foot 214. Did have 183 attempts, averaged 5.5 yards per carry, got 1000 yards, 44 forced to miss tackles and so a really decent all-around player. Um pretty strong after the catch obviously, maybe not the polished runner. And I'm not sure he can be more than a third down back, but he has the tools to develop into that. He has the size to 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 potentially be that, and the athleticism. It did to me seem like there was a lot of outside action when when he was doing most of his work, and and hey, from a if, receiving standpoint, uh, from a running standpoint, um, like as far as not, there wasn't a whole lot of between the tackle grinding uh, so much 
for him, but he's got the size and the physique to do so. Um, I think he ran a little faster than some people thought he was going to and was maybe a little bit more explosive. The, but I, you The know, numbers I, at the combine looked a little bit more uh, he, He's pretty than, deceptive on film, though. Like he, he usually does get away from you, and he looks like he's kind of moving a little slow, but he, he, he figures out how to get around you and get outside you, and then when he, when he has a lane, he can go. Um, and, and that's fine. At 2-9 here, I mean, there may have been one or two more guys that I would be okay with taking Rashad White over, but the fact that he could be a really good third down back with the size and 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 have and be plus to maybe hey maybe he can be a, a nice b with some rushing upside but also with great passing upside I, i'm okay with that I, I i wouldn't take him uh where some people have him as as kind of being the the rb4 i i, I would definitely yeah. put zamir in that category and i'm okay with taking a shot on zamir a little earlier than that but you may have a reverse action here where zamir maybe projects as a first second and rashad maybe the first second with a plus side and rashad maybe kind of be in that third down uh with plus side of maybe catching a little bit of first and second down work here right i i probably should have let him slide and taking like mcbride in tight end premium or taking mechie which to me is a much more appeal it's becoming more and more appealing to take mechie it's like why are we forgetting about mechie right he's the forgotten guy he's the best value maybe in the draft right right so i could easily take him here and just just push that fifth wide receiver from being or fifth running back from being taken And, and the more i look at the numbers and the more i watch the tape i feel like algier and Beatty. Are the guys I want to take over White and James Cook? Like, uh, those guys, I mean, Beatty, I don't know why he's not getting as much love. It's just because he's not over 200 pounds. That's got to be the only uh, reason. I don't know it's if like that's the, the only, only reason, thing. But. Because you have the receiving production. You have ridiculous uh, attempts and yards per carries and missed forced tackles and touchdowns and everything from Algier and Beatty. And then Beatty has, like, he's, like, the best wide receiving back in the class almost from a number standpoint like i don't know why he's not getting more love it must be the sizists out there yeah i mean i don't i don't think the nfl's giving him a whole lot of love either that, that kind of drives some of this so you know that'll be a, a a factor of kind of where he ends up and and, and that's fine with me leave him down there in the Let third round him. and and i'm fine with with taking my shots on 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 Beatty. you couldn't help yourself and had to jump on there uh with, with Beatty, even though we're, he is selected um, hasn't been selected yet. I did get a chance to take him in this draft. We are making every three picks. So, so you know, where where I took likely, I could have taken Sky Moore. I could have taken Mechie. I could have taken McBride. All those guys were right in there of, of making that decision really hard. I, I almost, the, my finger was itchy on Mechie and Sky Moore a million times. Uh, I, I felt like I wanted to break the tight end uh barrier there. Um, and, and I felt I felt pretty good about it. But yeah, no, I, Rashad wasn't quite in that mix for me there, but I, I get it. I'm fine with it. Um, so then 210, I took McBride, kind of talked about him already. He, he, I think he's the de facto number one for a lot of people. A lot of people probably said, how are you taking likely over McBride? I took him next on my next pick just to show you, hey, I'm taking these these guys neck and neck. Fine with that. McBride looks looks the part um, and, and looks really good. I, I'm no problem if you want to take him over likely. I'm just a likely guy right now. Um, so... Like I mentioned, 122 targets, 91 receptions, 1,100 yards, but only one TD in there. Um, did have a he was number one in yak, but likely was nipping at his heels with a whole lot less uh, receptions there, and then you know three drops on the, all those targets. So pretty shorthanded for McBride, but it's not as flashy, it's not as fun, it's not as downfield, it's not as weapony as what you saw from Likely or what I saw from Likely. Uh, so it's more um, Hunter. Who's you no? Know, who, it's more uh, Hunter Henry. Yeah, which is fine. I, I'm okay with that. Like that, Hunter Henry is another a one. A healthy of those, Hunter Henry. Uh, Hunter Henry is another one of those guys who doesn't necessarily play a whole lot in in line. He does a lot of his work in in more of a uh, wide receiver kind of but spectrum. But doesn't break the game. But can if he if he stays healthy, he certainly can break the game. I think. Uh, yeah, it's more of a move the chainer. Yeah, with some. So red he can get, he can get, yeah, which, which McBride, you didn't see a whole lot of red zone from, but he, he definitely moved the chains for you. Um, he was definitely, I mean, he, well, if you can move the chains, damn near, he, touchdowns, damn you know? near led the, led Kyle the Pitts entire wide touchdown. receiving crew with, with receptions, let alone the tight end. So that, that's a, that's a crazy number, a big jump for him from one year to the next. And um, then 
Moved to pick 211. Really bummed that Bauer's not here to talk about James Cook. I kind of took a shot at James Cook earlier in the show. Didn't really give him a chance to rebuttal. So it'd be interesting maybe have him back on, see where James Cook goes in the draft because he's like this. They're acting like he has Tyler Beatty reception type production, you know, and and looking at the numbers because I wanted him. I wanted to use James Cook's receiving production as an excuse for Zamir White to not have as much, but. I think he had like nineteen. Yeah, targets. I mean, it's just it's just it's the way he moves and 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 how he does it. And then you saw him at the combine and and being and being really super smooth. Also has you know he's got the bloodline and the and the genes to 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 push him up. I think there's he's like uh, Michael not Michael Bauer. That's another dynasty guy. Uh, John Bauer said uh, about Zamir how maybe the NFL community is going to like him a little more. I think the NFL community does like James Cook. A good bit so that's going to prop him up and give him extra chances i don't know if he'll ever be an a guy but he certainly has he'll never a, be dalvin cook well no shit he certainly has <laughs> if he was he'd be one one right he certainly has the the tremendous upside though to be taken at 211 and i probably would have taken mechie over him um but i'm a hundred percent down with taking as many shots on James Cook as I can because I do like what you see out there. He was kind of the change of pace for for the dogs there. The dogs just have a lot of a lot of options uh, going down out there, and I think he had maybe some injuries here and there. Uh, but uh, James Cook at two eleven and then two twelve. I think this is a layup. Went ahead and took Mechie. So yeah, so Mechie had uh, ninety receptions, uh, six hundred and twenty yak. That's fourth uh, eight missed tackles forced or eighth and missed tackles forced with 20 um, and just kind of did all that dirty work for Alabama and and seems to be the forgotten man he he's he was injured obviously no Jameson or Mechie in the in the championship game um, either one of those guys play and it's probably a different game especially Jameson uh, but Mechie just came on strong had had a bunch of really good players in front of him and waited his time and, and really exploded onto the scene to, to, to kind of do everything you can I think he'll be a nice slot player I think I think he's being under drafted and under loved right now but like I said and to lead this whole thing off like nobody really loved this draft class but we're, we're I was in I'm at two seven and debating like four dudes who I really really like and, and with the tight end the sky more the Mechie uh you know shit and, in the third round I'm debating who the fuck to take right I mean so, let's jump into the third and all right we'll, we'll just quickly run through this I took Wandell Robinson uh I, th- I think that's you know uh, another player who I'm like yeah I'm really right. excited about Could be a second round pick easily right and then we did a one quarterback draft and he was a first round pick which I thought was probably a little high but I mean he he's Jay, got shout out to Jay Mike he's got a lot of fun attributes to him little little you know if you want to be the sizes you can be he got he, he did had a lot of uh Rushing attempts at Nebraska, transferred to Kentucky and just blew it out the water. Had a lot of receptions this year in the 90 threshold area. Uh, but Wandell's a really, really fun player to watch on film. So no disrespect there at all. Um, he, he could, like you said, easily be a second rounder. Then Weidemeyer went, uh, which was a, a JB pick. Um, and, which he and, wants to take back, but I'm like, fuck it, keep it, man. Like well, this, something had to have been up at this pro day. Well, it, I don't know what's up at the, the lot. Can't there be was that some, slow. You there don't was some shape thrown. Like that and that's basically the, the shit that he put up was like Lance Zerline aligned it with an average starting center in the league with some of the with the metrics that he put up uh, testing wise. So that's that's that can't happen. And if that's the case, like you can't you can't you can't fuck with him in the third round. If you still want to take him, you could take him in as a flyer or on, you know, undrafted and, and be like, hey, I saw something good there. But you just can't do that uh, in the third round. Uh, so then I believe this was a year pick, which I almost took Kyron over Wandell Robinson when I at three one. But then I was like, ah, I got to get my guy Wandell in here. But Kyron, you know, getting some shade thrown at him because of the bad combine. Right. I mean, he was a guy that was, uh, I believe, pre-combine was Bowers running back three. I think he had him over Walker. We didn't quite get into Maybe that. Maybe two, even. Um, I think it was three. He, he was, they, them boys were pretty high on Spiller. Uh, but, you know, Kyron was, you know, we talked to Garrett Price. He had him as his, I believe, RB5. He was, he was, he wanted to even have him higher, too. Both of those guys seemed like they so, wanted to put him higher, but just didn't. And then if he would have blown up the combine, they would have just thrown him up there. But instead, they're almost burying them. Right. And I, I passed he on Kyron. He took James Cook over Kyron, who was a big fan of, you know. Right. But, I mean, I, I, I just kept passing on Kyron 
waiting to see when he would go. Right. You know, I just want to see. I did that with the quarterbacks, and, and I, I was because I'm not sure, man. This is too early. This is pre-draft. I, you know, we're we we've done these hardcore rookie profiles on these top guys, and we try to do that same analysis for the rest of the guys. It's just hard to bang it all out. You know, right. we got a lot going on, and this isn't our full-time job just yet. So we. To, to just be up on every single little thing for all right. these guys is damn near impossible. But from what I've seen from Kyron Williams, like he definitely looks faster and better than what the combine numbers showed up. And he, he's so strong out there. Strong, and a little good bit pass small, protection. Good pass protection, great in the receiving game, has more electricity than I think that 40 time has at 4 6 mm-hmm. 5. And I just, it's just, here's some value, man, because right. people want to just write them off because of the combine and it's like I said it about uh Isaiah Spiller don't let a bad combine neglect every negate everything you've seen from these guys on right. tape just right. don't do it and so yeah I, I felt pretty good about taking Kyron Williams that being said I could still take Mady and Algier over him at this point I'm really coming uh, up I'm, on I'm, them I'm boys I'm taking Kyron for sure I, I'm really digging w- what I see and and look into from Mady and Algier but so Weidemeyer maybe gets erased from here. We were looking for the third tight end. We thought he was up in there. Maybe not quite in there. Maybe uh, Dulwich or the UCLA, whatever his name is, maybe he takes his place a little bit here. Uh, but like you said a minute ago, we're talking about Kyron Williams here in the third round. I took Brian Robinson, another big physical guy out of Alabama who's, who moves pretty well, caught a lot of balls this year. Um, and and I feel like that's a fun pick at 3-4. Then you, you've been talking about – uh, Algier here from BYU and and uh, Algier Tyler Beatty, which you know I the like two Tyler's. I, I like Beatty. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sold on uh, the BYU guy here. I don't dislike him. Uh, I I would probably maybe take the stab on Beatty before him, uh, but he does he does give you that physical physicality, bigger back. Uh, he he did have the and has the more yardage. juice. It has a little bit of juice. Then uh, what the 40 time at the combine yeah. read. And then when I was looking for stats to try and back up my Rashad White pick, I just kept seeing Beatty and Algier at the fucking top of all of those lists. Yeah. Missed tackles forced, yards after contact, like attempts, yeah, you could, yards, receptions. Yards like, after contact for Algier is, is you know, he, he, he's he got that. Receptions physical, especially for Beatty. You physical, know? Oh, yeah. Um, Physicality. But, but just, then you, you throw Damian Pierce in this, where, which a lot of people like. Uh, didn't get a whole lot of run. He, he's got some upside to him. And then we're, we're at Jalen Tolbert out of out of South Alabama here, a wide receiver with a lot of juice. That was a JB pick. Uh, and, and, and so we're in the third round, and there's still guys here who could end up being pretty good players. And then you have Alec Pierce, who is the third round kind of size speed dart throw, the Christian Watson of the third round, the George Pickens of the third round, the, you know, Jameson Williams James, of the third you round, you know, just a big guy who didn't, didn't absolutely crush it numbers wise throughout. Uh, but, career, but watching but, Ritter tape, I was seeing him pop off with a bunch of like it, red good zone. jeans. His parents are both athletes that played at the collegiate level. The body contortion seemed like he had pretty good hands, blew up the combine with a four, four, one and a 40 and a half inch vertical with 129 inch broad. Like just, just, you know, came up in big spots for them and was the main dude at that team. And, and, and maybe the numbers overall don't look that great, but like what, what, what I was seeing looked pretty damn good. Kept popping off the page. So I'm pretty excited to stab at Alec Pierce at the end of a fucking third round. Right. Rookie draft. A hundred percent. So we're, again, we're still in the third round in this bad draft class and, and there's a right. whole lot of fun stabs. And now maybe the NFL draft will sort out some of this and devalue and, and increase value on some of these guys. But um, then, then you have Pierre Strong, who lit up the combine, South Dakota State guy. That's that's another fun stab here. JB took Kevin Harris, which I think is a good stab. 5'10", 220 out of South, out of South Carolina. Carolina. Uh, had has some good stuff on tape there. Uh, so that's that's a pretty strong stab. And then the fourth quarterback or fifth or sixth quarterback here, the last pick sixth. of the draft. Uh, Carson Strong here, who uh, seems to be everybody's least favorite, but you know he's probably going to end up going in, in a higher up in a third round for a lot of people just to be a quarterback. And and you know some some of the scouts do kind of like Carson Strong here more than some of those other quarterbacks, even that we took earlier than him. So we will see Was what's he, up. He had an ACL injury uh, that kind of made him uh, pretty stagnant and and I think a little scared at times. But but big physical guy can 
can seemingly make a lot of the throws. Who was so. the quarterback they were saying was just like a complete asshole at the combine? Just wouldn't – was like super immature. That wasn't Carson Strong? I have no idea. If you're saying the scouts like him, that must not have been him. I just meant from a the, – there is there is some scouts that have his, you know, performance and grade, um, you know, at a reasonable level, which I think most of the fantasy community is, is pretty down on him. Uh, whereas, you know, we, we were pretty down on him here in this draft. Uh, so we will see what happens. Uh, some other guys that didn't get mentioned or drafted, Jerome Ford, Khalil Shakir, uh, Isaiah Weston, uh, all guys, interesting uh, picks there. Ford was a Alabama running back that transferred to Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shakir is a, um, B, uh, yeah, BYU. As a Boise State guy who, great character, produced really well, can, can do a lot for you. Weston, uh, that's a Northern Iowa, crushed the combine. Uh, size, kind of not. I wouldn't say size, speed, but taller, faster guy. Uh, and I'm sure there's a couple other guys that we missed in there that are Calvin Austin, uh, fun, fun later round pick, uh, and, shorter sizes, uh, hater, yeah. but but super fast, super quick. Uh, and for another free, one of those Memphis guys who you know Memphis guys have had good track records recently. They uh, find dudes. They yeah. finding dudes yeah. over there in Memphis. Uh, Justin Ross is another fun. Free yeah, stab in the fourth Bo, round. Bo Melton, uh, Rutgers, pretty pretty decent. I combine. gotta throw my boys on of and Bam Knight out there. Yeah, put him down. Thank take you, him for free in the fourth round. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do it. It'll uh, be fun. So then you know, there's a couple other running backs with with uh, like you said, Bam Knight, um, Kennedy Brooks, and uh, Ingram from USC. That you know, some people might mix in there that that that, that they like as well. And and uh, the Old Miss Ely. I think some people are, are kind of hot and heavy on him too. So just some other names to be aware of. Uh, I know we went a little long on this one. Didn't didn't intend on going this long, but got to talking with a new person and and had a lot of back and forth. Uh, we were trying to move a little quicker, but mm. you know sometimes shit happens. Whoops, that's so. what happens when you're married to the game. All right, well let's kick it. We actually did record an outro with JB. We'll kick it back to that for your pleasure. Appreciate everyone for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, hit me with that five-star review on the Spotify's or the iTunes. And if you made it this far on the YouTube channel, you got to hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll be back with all kind of stuff for your Dynasty Fantasy Football pleasure. Peace.